This video is for two types of people, new players who would like to try out the game in 2022 and old players who are still using settings that are 10 years old and are causing performance issues. For the new players, you can go straight to installing CSGO. Veterans, go to your profile, click on workshop items, subscribed items, and unsubscribe from all these maps. You can also click unsubscribe from all. Subscribed workshop maps will automatically re-download onto your computer when you launch the game. Doing this will save space and keep things clean. Next, we're gonna find the Counter-Strike Global Offensive folder so we can reinstall the game without any leftovers. It's located inside Steam, Steam Maps, Common. Be aware, if you remove this folder, you remove the game, including screenshots, demos, and other stuff you might have. I have my own maps and VMFs from the SDK, so I'm just making sure I'll save them as well. Once that's done, uninstall the game through Steam, and then you can delete this folder. We're not done yet. One last folder that needs to go. Go to your Steam roots and click on user data. Here you will find the Steam accounts that have been used on your computer. To know which one's yours, simply go over your name on Steam, inventory, trade offers, who can send me trade offers, and you will find your numbers down here. Now go inside your folder, click on 730, local, and take out the CFG folder. This folder contains all your CSGO settings. Some of those settings, probably a lot of them, could be outdated, which could end up giving you slower performance. All right, the folder is out. Let's catch up with the new players. It's time to install CSGO. If you have the space, then make sure you install the game on your fastest drive since this will improve loading times. No one likes to wait for the last guy to join. When the game is installed, we want to add two necessary launch options and one optional. Novid will skip the intro video and Tickrate128 will just make sure that your offline games with bots is played on the preferred tick rate by the pros. Most of you will also want to use allow third party software. Make sure that's spelled the exact same way. This will allow you to stream CSGO through OBS with game capture, but it will reduce your trust score on the game. It's just Valve's way of combating cheaters, and yeah, it's terrible. You can now start the game, and because I care so much about your ears, we will start with audio. Quickly drop down to music and turn the knob to zero so you can hear me. You can turn this back on if you want later. Do the same for Def Camera, MVP, and Danger Zone. We want to turn this one up to 5%. This is a built-in cheat for the game. If you hear the music when the bomb is planted, that means there's only 10 seconds left to defuse. It's dumb, but you should definitely take advantage of it. Under audio, most of this is personal, but I recommend enabling advanced 3D since it greatly improves location of sound. For the love of Gaben, use your microphone when playing this team-based game. Lower the voice volume down to at least 20 since players love to use $5 microphones. And set positional to no so you can learn to distinguish who everyone is instead of having to look at them. Video settings. Quickly change this sucker to full screen. Full screen gives you brightness options and less input delay. Your resolution is personal preference, but can also slightly affect performance. Here's a benchmark I made just to show you the drop. I am most comfortable with 1920 by 1080 and I've used it for many years. Under advanced video settings, I'll simply use the same as Albu Performance. He's a YouTuber who has done an amazing job benchmarking every setting of the game. If you want to watch his full video, I'll link it down below. The recommended settings are medium, high, disabled, high, high, enabled, enabled, 8x, disabled, 16x, disabled, 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 and enabled. Effect and shader when set to high makes it easier to see through mollies and grenade explosions from a distance. And that is the exact opposite when set to low up close. Low settings also results in slightly better performance. I personally prefer high settings. We're done here. Now over to game options. Don't worry, I won't take too much of your time. Disable this for tutorials on the screen. Lowering this value can affect the time it takes to find a game. Increasing it means you could end up on a server in a different region. It totally depends on your location. Change this value to match your internet speed. You can Google speed test for speed results. 
To keep things short, it's 2022 and most of us will be using unrestricted here. Enable developer console and now move on to HUD. Change this to your liking, though I suggest keeping health ammo style on default. This gives away if you're using burst mode. Next up, team. Change this to your liking, but a strong recommendation is to have this set to show location and equipment. You'll be able to see your teammates and their items through walls, which is great information to have. Communication is also based on your preference, but please communicate. That's what this game is for. Spectator scoreboard has good default settings already, except this one. Disable it. You can still trigger the replay feature if you really want to see how you got wrecked. Under item, you also have good default settings already. Moving on to radar tablet. The only two things I'd recommend is to disable this option and lower this to 0.4. This gives you much better view of the radar map. The last one is crosshair. Contrary to popular belief, there is no right or wrong crosshair. Whoa. Just make your changes and go bananas. Once you're done, move on to keyboard and mouse. Your mouse settings are on the top. Make your changes, but leave zoom sensitivity alone. I'm gonna go a bit deeper on that one later. Under movement keys, disable this command. Whoever made this sucks at video games. Under weapon keys, you can use a radial menu if you're playing on a controller. I'm looking at you. Under UI, you can find your console key. Try it out by going to the home menu. If it doesn't work, just change the key. Some keys for some reason just don't seem to work. Under communication, you'll find that your voice key is set to K for some reason I cannot understand. It's like Valve doesn't want you to communicate. I strongly suggest moving it closer to your hand. And lastly, your chat wheel keys for radio messages, which is used by people who hate communicating. Yay, you are done with the in-game settings now. It's time to locate where all of your settings are stored so we can add one last file. Go to your Steam root and look for user data. The veterans will probably recognize this already. Inside, you'll find the Steam accounts that have been used on your computer. To know which one's yours, simply go over your name on Steam, inventory, trade offers, who can send me trade offers, and you'll find your numbers down here. Proceed through the correct folder, 730, local, and this folder right here contains all your current settings. The files inside get updated when you make changes in the game, so I suggest leaving them alone. The config file has all of your basic settings and the video file your video settings. Ignore the other two, they are just flexing. The file we are missing is called the auto exec, and it stores all of your other settings that are not inside any of these files. This is the part of the video where I promote my own auto exec and tell you that it's the best. It really is. Link will be down below. Open the downloaded zip file and inside you'll find three files. If you really wanted to copy me all the way, move all three to the CFG folder and replace them with the ones inside. But for this video, we will only drag the auto exec. You can open it with notepad or any text editing program. I promise to go through it really fast so we can start playing. Under HUD, we have this freeze cam command. It's an old feature that no one wants. Under radar, we have a command that changes player size icons. It's in this file because it's missing in the game options. I have it set to 0.6, which is the default value. Zoom sensitivity. This value is the result of a calculation done by Einstein. When this exact value is used, it will match your sensitivity when zoomed in. I'll provide an explanation below if interested, but I can recommend using this value. Under view model, we have my custom view model settings. They are not saved inside the config file, so I needed to put them here. You can remove this if you want or use them since they are awesome. Under Bob, we have some advanced settings that control how much you swing your arms. I have them on the lowest possible so it's less distracting. Under network, we get to the nerdy stuff. I'm using settings here that are optimized for a fast internet connection or LAN environment. I'd say if you can maintain 10 megabits per second as your download speed, just use the same rate. If you can't and you are below 10, lower your rates down to a safe value like 196608, which is the default value. For these commands, just leave them. They are gold standards. 
Seal interbratio, however, might require some adjusting. It stands for interpolation ratio. It's a network feature that provides smoother gameplay by guessing where players will be in the game using advanced math. Setting it to one is going to give you the most accurate representation of where enemies are, but this could cause packet loss. If you experience your game to be laggy or jumpy, like NIP did against Anonymo, use interp ratio 2 instead, which is the default value. That is literally all the network settings we need. No, really. The stuff you found from 2014, it's completely useless. We can move on. My favorite friend, the net graph. This panel shows your frame rate and server connection. I have mine disabled because it's used together with a script further down, but if you need it, enable it. And here are some commands that I couldn't fit into other categories. You can read them yourself, I'll just go to the scripts. The first one is our jump throw. For new players, this is THE script. It lets you jump and throw at the exact same time with no human error. Every player who competes on a serious level is using this in some form. I have mine set to mouse 5, but change this to whatever you want. To use it, simply hold down mouse 1 when using a nade, then you can jump throw. This is just shortcuts because I'm lazy. Instead of going to the console with disconnect or quit, I can type D or Q. Microseconds saved. This next script that I've made is a pretty beefy one, but it's a life saver. Say you want F to be two commands. Its primary command will inspect your weapon, but its secondary command will bring out your smoke. So instead of having your smoke on a separate key, you can use both commands on the same key. The secondary command is triggered when holding down your master key, which for me is mouse 4. If interested, change it up however you want. The last part that we need is this. Now that we have all your settings ready, I suggest uploading them to settings.gg so you have a backup. Congrats, you are ready to play competitive. For the old veterans, let me know if your game works better now. Under maximhere.me, which is my website, you have CSGO modifications. They're all 100% safe to use. I've been using them for many years myself, even on third-party services. The text color mod makes the game more colorful and modifies some strings. Next we have the improved radio mod. This modifies the old radio panels to be way more useful. I use them all the time. The last modification is the golden radar, which as the name suggests modifies the radar map images to a gold theme. The installation instructions are inside each of the mods, it takes less than a minute to install, super easy. Finally, to get some nice vibrant colors into the game, I use a little program called Vibrance GUI, link down below. You can change the in-game vibrance so that it only affects the game without affecting windows. I highly recommend it. I do have a couple more tweaks and settings that are very personal to my own setup, but I could put them in a future video. That's why you should subscribe for more, like this video to show your support, stay awesome, and go bananas.